Hello, I'm Lara Lynn. This is Matt. This is Anna Paula. And this is another episode of Workout with NMC. We're here at the Yoga Shala, and today we're going to be guiding you through a beginner to intermediate yoga class. If you want to do some things that are a little bit easier, you can follow Matt. If you want to maybe find something a little more spicy, you can follow me or Anna Paula. So you can kick off your shoes, get your yoga mat, and let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start standing. Sometimes it's difficult to find our motivation to get moving. So when we shake a little bit, we're gonna get a little more blood flow going and you're gonna feel more motivated to actually get started. So standing with your feet about hip distance apart, even wider if you think you need a stronger base, bending your knees. We're gonna start just with a little bit of a bounce and a shake and some deep breaths. This is especially good if you've had a stressful day or if you've just found yourself feeling anxious or not in the mood to work out, then a little bit of shaking is a nice way to get things started. If bouncing up and down is uncomfortable for you in any way, you can just shake your arms and shake your legs and nod your head. <laughs> And usually after a few seconds, you'll feel a little warmer. Good, coming back to standing. Nice, let's inhale, rise up onto your toes for a moment if you can, and exhale, swish the arms down. Inhale, rising, exhale, swish. And one more. Beautiful. A little bit of twisting, so keep the arms nice and floppy. This is called Kati Chakrasana. It's a nice way to also release the fascia of the body, which is that big connective web. And once the fascia is loose, you'll find everything moves a little easier. For this session, we're gonna be breathing in and out through the nose. This is gonna to help to keep you focused and energized. Starting to slow it back down and coming back to center. Nice. Okay, from here we can make our way down to a seat. So finding yourself in a comfortable seated position on the floor. If you don't find sitting on the floor very comfortable in the beginning and you have something around like yoga blocks or pillows or something to elevate your sit bones, that can make it easier. But just know that with time, it will get easier to sit on the floor if you do it often. We're gonna do a little bit of breath work. So this is called Bastrika Pranayam. Pranayama is a way of working with the breath to increase energy in the body. So there's many different styles of pranayam. Bastrika is specifically designed to energize us for a practice. So we're gonna do this one with the arm movements. The arms are like this, we call this the cactus position. And we're going to be here with the exhale. Inhale, reaching up. As though you're grabbing air, exhale a little pump with the elbows down into the ribs. The inhale and exhale are both equally as powerful. So inhale, big open belly, exhale, abdominal muscles squeeze in. So we're gonna do a slow rhythm and then we're gonna speed it up a little. If you prefer to stay with the slow rhythm, you can do that. So starting with a normal inhale and exhale through the nose. And let's begin. Slowing back down again. Inhale, reach up, hold your breath in. Exhale, float the arms down, rest them onto the knees. Return to normal breathing. Try to breathe down into the belly.
you may notice that you feel much more elevated. Maybe the body is even a little bit more tingly. Very nice. Pranayama is a beautiful way for us to enhance our movement practices. So pranayama can be practiced before any kind of movement practice or even by itself. Some pranayamas energize, other pranayamas soothe and relax us. Super nice. Bring your hands together into prayer in front of your heart center. We'll set an intention for this practice and maybe beyond. So I invite you to set the intention with me of devoting yourself to your health and your wellness. Happy people treat others with love and respect. So once you take care of yourself, naturally you're going to be the best version of yourself for the people around you. When you're ready, you can release your hands and open up your eyes. Beautiful. All right, let's move to our hands and knees. From time to time, I might turn in this direction. That's just to give you a side view. You, of course, just stay as you are facing the camera. So ground your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. And we're gonna do a little bit of cat-cow pose. Your feet can be flat or toes curled. Inhale, drop the belly down to the floor, lift the tailbone and the chin. And with your exhale, rounding the back, pull the belly button in, tuck the chin in. And we'll repeat, inhale, this is called cow pose. Exhale into cat pose. Keep moving with your breath, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose. Let's do three more rounds, inhale. Feeling these two positions of the spine. You've often heard that you are as old as your back is, and if you take care of your spine, you'll always feel nice and limber and loose and strong. Last round, inhale. And exhale. And coming back to a nice normal table pose. We're gonna do some hip circles, lifting up through your left leg. Very nice. And then take your knee out to the side, into the center, and up and back. So I've said left leg, I'm doing my right leg. This is to make it easier for you. You pretend you're looking in a mirror so that you can just do as you see. Very nice. Into the center, one more time. Up and back, extend the spine. Out to the side, into the center, up and back. Now hold this position. Opposite arm, so your right arm going up and back and see if you're able to grab hold of your foot. If you're not able to reach the two points together, then you simply stay here reaching towards them. If you are able to grab your foot, extend up to the sky. Balance can be a little bit tricky here. If from time to time you need to put your foot or your hand down to find balance, that's no problem. Remember, it's called a yoga practice, not a yoga perfect. We're just having fun with our bodies moving with intention. Release, maybe you can straighten out those two arms and legs and exhale down to center. Let's do the other side, right leg up and back, inhale and exhale out to the side, into the center, up and back. Out to the side, bring it in, round the spine, stretch it back. Out to the side, bring it tight in and stretch it back, hold this position. Opposite arm, so your left arm goes forward, up and back. See if you're able to hold on to your foot or your ankle. Pick a little point on the floor to focus on. This is called tiger pose, Vyagrasana. Breathing through the nose. If you started taking the practice too seriously, smile so you remind yourself that this is all for your devotion to wellness and happiness. 
release gently out and down back into tabletop. Widen your knees out, big toes together and sit your he hips back towards your heels as you slide the fingertips forward and deepen the breath. You can either rest your forehead on the mat or if your flexibility allows, you can go chest to the mat. Nice. Slowly come back up to table pose. Let's move ourselves forward into plank. So either you can step your hands forward and shift your hips forward into a half plank where your knees are grounded or option to come into the full plank pose. Important here with plank pose, we are not allowing the tailbone to lift and the lower back to sag, nor are we pushing the hips back into like a down dog. We have a nice straight position. We can lower down into one little push up. So you can either do that knees down, push up back to the top, or you can do that knees up, lower and try pressing back up. Nice, let's go again, lower and press. One more, lower and press, beautiful. We're gonna lower down to the floor all the way, nice and slow, chest touching first, and then curl up into a cobra pose. Here you can decide how high you would like to go by bending the elbows. Some people enjoy a nice deep extension of the spine, others may prefer to stay a little lower. Whatever you've chosen, deep breaths. This is a nice counter pose to sitting all day where we might be rounding the spine and where we might be starting to put a lot of stress on the lower back. Lower back down to the floor. Press into your hands and your knees back to table and from table curl the toes under for a downward facing dog. Relax your head, press down strongly through your hands. If your back of your legs feel tight, you can bend through your knees to make this easier for your back. If your shoulders feel tight, bending your knees will also help. And then you can start to what we call walk the dog, bending one knee while the other one straightens and then alternating. Try to remember your ujjayi breath in and out through the nose. Start to feel the arms getting stronger, the back of the legs getting more limber. Beautiful, coming back to center. We're gonna slowly walk our toes to the front of the mat until you can have all your weight into your feet, into a little dangle pose. So you're just hanging out there. You don't have to try to stretch deeper. You're just allowing your body to be where it is. Swaying a little bit from side to side can help. Releasing our tension from the low back, tractioning the spine. Hmm. Come back to center, bend the knees, start to curl up one vertebra at a time, nice and slow, especially if you feel dizzy, come up gentle, gentle, gentle. And once you're up at the top, expand the arms out and up and exhale, hands to heart center. Coming into a nice strong standing position, we call this mountain pose. So that was our little warm up. Probably you already feel it's getting nice and hot. The heat in yoga is beneficial. We call it tapas and tapas burns up impurities in the blood and in the mind. So anytime you're feeling really challenged and hot, remember that it has beneficial properties. 
Nice, we're gonna do a slow motion sun salutation, just one round on each side. The sun salutation is like your bread and butter of yoga. Once you know the sun salutations, you could probably just repeat those and you'd have a very, very strong, beautiful practice. We're gonna inhale, rising up, maybe extending the spine, so it means a little back bend, but just as much as you like. Exhale, folding at the hips. Use your abdominal muscles to bring you down into that forward fold position again. Knees can be bent. We're gonna take a couple of breaths at each place so that we can feel the poses. From here, use your fingertips for support and step your right leg to the back of the mat. Nice, ground the knee slowly down and then inhale, rise up into a crescent lunge. So if you want to, again, you can try arching your back. Again, I'm just turning sideways for you to be able to see. Reaching backwards only as far as it feels good for you. Slowly come back down, fingertips to the floor. We're gonna step our front foot to the back. You recognize this position, downward facing dog. Inhale, bring the knees down to the floor. You recognize this. Exhale, we're going through a little half plank, lower down to the floor. And inhale, cobra. And exhale, push back, downward facing dog. Very nice. The right foot that we took to the back, we're gonna bring it forward now. This can be tricky. Sometimes we feel like we get stuck halfway. If that happens, you can put down your knee, take your leg forward and step it to the front. Inhale, rise into the crescent lunge again. And slowly hands down to the floor. Lift your back knee, step forward and forward fold. Another breath here. And then rising up, curling up real slow. Inhale, circle up with the arms and hands to heart center. So that's a half a round of a sun salutation. Let's complete the round. Inhale, rising up, maybe a little back bend. Exhale, hinging at the hips, forward fold, also known as Uttanasana. Left leg to the back this time. Very nice, knee down. Inhale, rising up, crescent lunge. You might feel that the body is starting to get more spacious now. Go ahead and Find all the room available to you. Slowly come forward and down, hands to the floor. Step back to downward facing dog. Slowly bring the knees down to the floor. Here comes that half push-up, shift the hips forward, lower down, use the strength of the arms, body is like a plank, down to the floor. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Again, here comes that tricky part. We wanna step the left foot to the front of the mat. Round your spine, draw in and step the foot forward. Adjust if you need to. And then rising up, crescent lunge. Also known as Anjaneyasana. Slowly bring the fingertips down to the floor. Lift your back knee. Step forward to the front of your mat. Start noticing that each time you repeat a pose, the pose feels more familiar and a little bit easier. Let's roll up to standing one more time. Inhale up to the top. And exhale, hands down to heart center. Mountain pose, feeling good. 
Sun salutations are typically practiced in the morning as the sun is rising and it's all the things that you need to have your body feel great for that day. So if there's anything you take away from this video, the sun salutations can be repeated sometimes up to 108 times in a morning, but you just start with one round. <laughs> okay, let's try a little bit of balance poses. I heard somebody once call these equanimity poses and I love that because balance poses, some days they're good, some days they're bad or let's say some days they're tricky, but we're always coming to them with just a sense of curiosity and wonder and never trying to label them as like something that's frustrating us or something that we're proud of. We're just exploring them. Nothing good, nothing bad, just is what it is. So ground your feet. If you feel that your yoga mat is kind of soft and is sabotaging your balance, you can always step off onto a harder part of the floor. And then we're going to find balance into our left leg. So you can come onto the toes of your right leg. This makes it easier for you to start getting used to being on a single leg. The knee can be slightly bent. For now, let's bring our hands onto our hips. This helps to make sure we're not shifting out the hips. And we're just going to slide the foot up onto the ankle with the knee open and that is controlled by your glute muscles. Glute muscle is pulling that leg out. We're so close to the floor so that you can just put the toes down anytime you need to. If you feel really strong and stable here, slide the foot a little higher. It can rest onto the calf muscle. Nice. Still feeling good? There is an option to pull the foot all the way up into the groin, pressing the heel into the flesh of your thigh. But if this already threw you off and you were struggling with balance, go to one of the previous options. Then we'll take the hands up to the sky, the branches of the tree. And if you feel little wobbles, just use your arms to help you balance. Deepening your breath. As I mentioned before, balance poses, sometimes they're tricky. Some days we feel much more balanced. And you're just coming to the practice, willing to just observe the poses and what they're offering you. Super nice. We're gonna slowly release, foot back down to the floor grounding. What you're likely to have felt is all the muscles in your standing leg are super, super activated. So all those little wobbles that you felt, they're making your feet, your ankles, your legs intelligent and strong. Let's move over to the other side, grounding, bending in the knee so that there's balance. The other foot getting up onto the toes, starting to feel the balance. Very nice, sliding onto the ankle. And remember, you're so close to the floor here, you can just touch the floor at any time if you need to. Option to slide the foot a little bit higher. Observe your breath. And then, of course, you're welcome to try for a higher option, putting the foot into the groin and then pressing in. Once you've found the pose that you would like to work with, you can bring the arms up for balance. Our breathing tells us a lot about the pose or how we're experiencing the pose. When the breath becomes very quick or shallow, then it tells us that we're not really fully comfortable in the pose. So the object of the pose is thira sukham asanam. The posture is steady and comfortable. That's what we're aiming to achieve even with the most difficult postures. Great job. Remember, if you struggled with balance, be patient. Balance is a skill like any other skill, and it takes many hours to master. Nice, rock forward onto the balls of the feet and then backwards into the heels. You'll notice that every part of the body is working in yoga. No part gets neglected. Great, let's come into chair pose. We're gonna get a little bit of burn going, so now it's Big toes and heels coming together to touch, lowering down as though you're sitting on an imaginary chair and fingers reach up. 
I use this joke a lot, but maybe you've never been in my class, so you don't know it. I call this public toilet pose, and the next time you're having to use a public toilet, you're going to remember me and you're going to thank me for the strength you've built here. So we're dipping down nice and deep. I want to be able to see my toes. So if my knees are too far forward, I want to draw the knees backwards, 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 and fingers reaching up. If this is not good for your shoulders in any way, if it's painful, you're welcome to drop the arms down. We want to get a nice little bit of a burn going in the thighs. So if you're feeling that burn, remember what we talked about, the heat and the burn is beneficial. We're using it to teach us how to be in discomfort and find peace of the mind, steadiness of the breath. How's it going, guys? Are we feeling burn? Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> Very nice. When you're ready, bring your hands to heart center. We're not going to release quite yet. What we're going to do is take the right leg and extend it out to the back into a warrior three. Little balance pose. It can also look like this, or you can be all the way in. Leg getting super strong. Back to chair pose. Ready for the other side, hands to heart center. Extend the left leg out to the back. Try to keep the lifted leg really straight and strong. Standing knee is always slightly bent. And back to chair pose, great job. Exhale into a forward fold. You may notice now that your forward fold actually feels really good. Maybe it was a struggle pose in the beginning of practice, but now that you've been through a bunch of other struggle poses, it feels much nicer. Great, use your hands for support. We're going to come down onto the knees, and if it's comfortable for you to sit all the way back. We're gonna play with a challenging pose called crow pose. Crow pose is the entry pose for what we know as arm balances. So some people are much better at arm balances to begin with. Some people are more flexible to begin with. Remember that you're going to have strengths and weaknesses in different places. The idea is that each time you repeat the poses, you'll get a little stronger and a little more flexible, and eventually the poses will be easy. So crow pose looks like this. I'm going to turn sideways. You can also have a look at Matt and Anna Paula. Anna Paula is more new to this pose. Matt's done this pose a whole bunch. So remember that the idea is not to be perfect at anything when you're starting. We're going to come into this little squat position. Bum is lifted up real nice and high and walking your feet closer towards your hands, roughly about a foot distance away from your own wrist. Ideally, you would put your knees into your armpits, or you can go to the outside of your triceps. The higher your hips are lifted, the easier it's gonna be. Then lean forward, bending the elbows a little bit so that you've got a shelf to rest your legs on, and then you can see if the feet can float up. You can also try doing one foot at a time, and you might find that you're pushing and falling back and pushing and falling back before one day maybe you find some balance, you're able to breathe and smile. Remember, just like the standing poses, balance takes time. Coming back down, how'd it go? Yeah? Good. Good. <laughs> Smiles all around. Nice. That pose was just for fun. There are a lot of yoga poses that are super fancy, super tricky, super fun, and you don't have to do them all at once, but it's fun to just try them so you see how you progress. Great. Next, we're going to do camel pose. This is another backbend extension. I'm a real fan of the extensions because most of us are sitting all day. So on your knees, we're going to come up. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see what this looks from the side. I prefer to curl my toes under. You'll notice that this brings my heel up a whole lot higher than the flat foot at the back, but some people prefer the flat foot. So you can see what works for you. 
We're going to support our lower back with our hands, fingertips are pointing downwards, elbows are pulled in, and already we feel a nice open chest. With our next inhale, we're going to lift the chest, lean backwards with the shoulders, squeeze your butt muscles, and start to slowly extend the spine. You can keep your chin tucked if it makes it easier to breathe, or you can let the head go all the way back. Tuck the chin, come back to the top, and gently sit back down. Nice. We're going to do a second round. Sometimes the poses take a little bit of time for us to get used to them. So second round always gives us an opportunity to be more comfortable. For the second round, if you'd like to, you have the option of releasing the hands to the heels. If it doesn't feel possible, if you feel like you're struggling to get them, Stay with the first variation. When you're ready, rising. Get your feet into whichever position you prefer. Maybe you want to start with the hands on the back again. Inhale, lift the chest, and then start to lean backwards, squeeze the bum, let your core support you, and maybe you're able to reach the hands backwards. Nice. Yes. Beautiful. We're really focused on the chest is lifted. Lovely. Head backwards, focus on your breathing. Tuck the chin first. Use your core muscles to bring you out. And then sitting slowly back down. Deep breaths. That pose is really one of the most fantastic antidotes to uh, all of the aches and pains we develop from sitting all day. The body really is a use it or lose it kind of thing. If you stay stationary or static a lot, you'll actually find you get more aches and pains from doing too little than you do from actually moving your body. Great, we're gonna let the hips come to one side, legs over to the other side. Finding ourselves into a little core pose here. This is called boat pose. Again, I'm just gonna turn sideways so you can see. We're on the sit bones and we're going to deliberately round our back a little bit so the core is engaged. We're mostly focused on rounding by the low back and then tippy toe backwards until you can float the legs. If you feel like it's very tricky to float here, you can use your hands for support or you can try sort of lifting one leg and then the other one until your core muscles get strong enough to float. Option to stay holding on or option to extend the arms, option to stay bent with the knees or option to extend. Looking at the big toes like a laser focus, keep your breath strong. Keep your heart happy. Feel all the stability that's growing in the abdominal muscles. Nice, how are we doing? Starting to get the Elvis shakes? Yeah, that's normal. <laughs> Good, and three, two, one. Release it back down. Beautiful, great job. If you're still with us, you're doing an excellent job. We're gonna lie back down to the floor now. So you can gently lower down onto the floor. Go ahead and keep your knees bent. <sighs> Relax and breathe. We'll finish with a very gentle or easy inversion. We're gonna use bridge pose today, Satu Bandhasana. Feet are grounded on the floor. Hands can be placed palms down next to your hips. And we're gonna press down through the feet to lift the hips up to the sky. Squeeze your bum so that you can lift a little higher. Press down through the feet, activate your legs. If you want to get a little hamstring burn, you can 
imagine you're pulling the heels of your feet toward you. They won't actually move, but just the action of you drawing or magnetizing the heels in is gonna give you a real nice hamstring activation. It's tempting to open the belly to get higher, but we're keeping the belly in and we're keeping the breath deep. Option to keep the hands down or to bring the hands underneath the hips, propping yourself up into a higher position. Really nice and lengthening for the neck as well. Option to stay here, but if you want to, you can lift one leg up and then this technically becomes an inversion. Anytime we have a leg and the hips above the heart, we're inverted. Nice. If you chose an extended leg, bring it down. Let's move to the other side. Remember your breathing. And lowering down. If you've got your hands under your hips, release them and roll your spine slowly down to the floor. And rest here for a moment. We're winding down now to the end of the practice. We really like finishing with a gentle spinal twist. Let your knees fall over to your right side. Good job. And let your shoulders stay relaxed. You can even spread your arms out to the sides. And then if you feel comfortable, let your head look over at your left hand. Bring your head back to the center. Bring your knees up and over and gently to the left side with the knees, head and shoulders relaxed. It doesn't matter if the knees touch the floor, just let them hang as they are. And once you're comfortable, look with your head to your right hand. Close your eyes and let your breath become soft. Bring your head back to the center. Bring your knees back up to the center. And we're going to finish with Shavasana. So we're just going to lie our legs all the way flat, arms next to the body. Wiggle and jiggle your whole body a little bit so that you feel fully spread out, fully relaxed. Preferably your feet are hanging a little bit out to the sides, palms of the hands turned upwards. And again, maybe we're just gonna take a couple of breaths to release the practice. So inhaling nice and deep through the nose. Release through the mouth. Inhale, nose. Exhale, mouth. One more of these relaxing breaths. Now return to normal breathing. You no longer need to control the breath like Ujjayi breath. You can just let the breath become whatever pace feels comfortable and natural. Every yoga class is ended with Shavasana. It's a super important yoga pose as we're allowing the body and the mind to integrate the practice. It's a time of absorption. 
It's a time for downloading the information. Shavasana is sometimes even practiced on its own when we feel that the nervous system needs attention or resetting, when we feel overwhelmed, or when we feel that we've come through a big experience and we need time for that assimilation. Science has actually shown us now that taking a non-sleep deep rest moment after a big workout or even after learning something new like a language or practicing an instrument, we are able to come back to the practice the next time a little bit further. And the best part of Shavasana is there's nothing special to do here, just to lie and relax, just to be as we are. In a time where we feel that our worth is tied to our productivity, Shavasana is also an act of rebellion against this super hectic society. Stealing these moments away for ourselves where we can just be a human being and not a human doing. now you'll have noticed that your heart rate has come all the way down. And the body is fully peaceful. Let's start to slowly animate the body again by wiggling the fingers wiggling the toes, rolling your head gently from side to side, then you can bend your knees, draw them in towards your chest, give yourself a gentle little hug or a squeeze. And slowly come back up into a comfortable seated position. Maybe you already noticed that the seated position on the floor is a little bit easier. Maybe you notice that your mood is lighter and you feel a lot more connected to your body Bring your hands to meet each other again one more time into prayer in front of your heart center. And one more time, I invite you to revisit your intention that we set for the practice and maybe beyond this yoga session. The intention to devote ourselves to our health and our happiness Remembering that people who are healthy and happy naturally treat others with love and respect. Thank you so much for your beautiful practice. Thank you for joining me. It's an honor to have guided you. Namaste. Thank you.